A duck sat on her eggs in the woods. She sat there for a long time. Then the eggs opened and some ducklings came out. The ducklings put their heads outside the eggs. Chick, chick, they said. Quack, quack, answered the mother duck. She stood up. They aren't all here, she thought. The largest egg isn't open. Do I have to sit here all day? She sat down again. An hour later, the big egg opened. Chick, chick, said the duckling, and it fell out of the egg. But oh, it was very big and ugly. The duck looked at it. That's a very big duckling, she said. It's very strange. The next day, the mother duck took the ducklings down to the river. She jumped into the water. Quack, quack, she cried. And the ducklings jumped into the water, too. The water went over their heads, but the ducklings started to swim. The ugly duckling jumped in the water, too. He can swim. He's a clever duckling the mother duck thought. He's quite pretty now in the waiter. She called to her ducklings. Quack, quack, come with me. We're going to see the other ducks, but stay near me and don't go near the cat. So they went into the garden and the ducklings stayed near their mother. But the other ducks looked at them and said, Now there are too many ducks in this garden, and that big duckling is very ugly. We don't want him here. One of the ducks started to push him away. Leave him, the mother duck said. He won't hurt you. He's big and ugly, so we don't want him near us, the ducks said. He isn't beautiful but he's a very good child, the mother duck told the other ducks. He's clever, and he swims very well. He stayed in his egg for a long time, so he's different from the other ducklings. But the ducks and hens were unkind to the poor duckling. He's so big, they all said. The duckling was very unhappy. They don't like me because I'm ugly, he thought. Nobody spoke to him or went near him. His brothers and sisters were unking, too. We want the cat to catch you, you ugly duckling, they cried. After the first day, the mother duck said sadly, I want you to go away. The ugly duckling ran out of the garden. The little birds in the trees were afraid. They're afraid of me because I'm ugly, the duckling thought. He ran and ran. Then he came to a big field. Some wild ducks lived there. He stayed in the field all night. In the morning, the wild ducks saw the duckling. Who are you? they asked. The ugly duckling could not answer. Poor thing. He was very sad. He stayed in the field for two days. Then two wild geese talked to him. You're very ugly, but we like you, they said kindly. Come with us and be a wild bird. Bang! It was the sound of a gun. The two wild geese fell down dead on the ground. Bang! A lot of wild geese flew up into the sky. Bang! There were men with guns everywhere. First, they killed the wild geese. Then their dogs ran through the fields to the river. The duckling was afraid and closed his eyes. A big dog came near him. When he saw the duckling, he opened his big mouth. Then he looked at the duckling again and ran away. The dog doesn't want to eat me because I'm ugly, the duckling thought. 
all day he heard the sound of the guns. He waited a long time before he left the river. Then he ran very quickly across the fields. The duckling came to a small house. The door of the house was open, so he walked inside. An old woman lived in the house with her cat and her hen. The next morning, the cat and the hen saw the duckling and made a lot of noise. What is it? The old woman asked. She looked everywhere in the room, but her eyes were not good. Oh, it's a fat duck, she said. Good. Now I'll have duck's eggs. The old woman, the cat, and the hen watched the duckling. They waited for a long time, but there were no eggs. The cat and the hen got angry with the duckling. Where are your eggs? The hen asked. I haven't got any eggs. The duckling answered. Then don't talk to us. And the cat said, Can you make a nice noise? I make a nice noise, purr, purr. No, I can't. The duckling answered, Then don't talk to us, the cat said. The poor duckling was very unhappy. I want to go into the river again, he told the hen. Why? the hen asked. You're only thinking about the river because you're bored. Give us some eggs. Then you'll be busy and you won't think about the river. But it's nice in the river the duckling said. The water goes over your head. It's very nice. You're ill, the hen said. Ask the cat. She thinks you're ill too. Who wants water over their head? Nobody. Ask the old woman. She'll tell you. She doesn't want to go in the river. But it's very nice, the duckling said again. What? Nice? Do you know more than the cat and the old woman? You live in a nice house with kind people. Be happy. Give them some eggs or make nice noises. I want to go to the fields and the woods and the river again, the duckling said. Then go now, said the hen. So the duckling went to the river and jumped it into the water. But nobody spoke to him because he was so ugly. It was winter. The days were very cold and it started to snow. I'm going to die, the poor duckling thought. One night, when it was nearly dark, some large, white birds flew near him. They're very beautiful birds, he thought. They were swans. They flew up and up in the sky. They were on their way to a warm country across the sea. The ugly duckling watched them for a long time. Ah, I'll always remember those beautiful birds. What are they? Where are they going? He thought. He loved them more than anything. I don't want to be as beautiful as those birds. I know that isn't possible. But why can't I live with the other ducks in the garden? Then I'll be happy. The river was so cold. The duckling could not stay in the water because it was too cold. One night, he fell down in the snow. In the morning, a man came to the river. He saw the duckling, and he took the little bird home to his wife. The man's children wanted to play with him, but the duckling was afraid. When he tried to run away, he fell into some milk. The man's wife shouted, and the duckling was more afraid. He jumped onto some food and ran everywhere. The woman shouted again and hit him. The children tried to catch him, and they shouted too. The door was open, 
So the duckling ran out into the snow. The poor duckling walked through the fields and the woods. Sometimes he wanted to sit down in the snow and die. But he lived through the winter, and one day he saw the sun again. The duckling stood up. He was bigger now, and he could fly high up in the sky. Up, up he flew. He came down in a large garden by a river. There were a lot of beautiful trees in the garden. Oh, everything was lovely. Three beautiful white swans flew down from the sky to the river and sat on the water. The duckling remembered them. I saw those birds before, he thought. I'll go and talk to them. They'll kill me because I'm ugly. But I'll try. He ran to the water and swam to the beautiful birds. Kill me, said the poor duckling. He put his head down near the water and he saw... What did he see in the water? He saw a swan. He was not a fat, ugly duckling. He was a swan. He was born from a swan's egg. The other swans were happy to see him. Then some little children ran into the garden. They threw bread into the water, and the youngest child cried, There's a new swan! The other children looked at him. The new bird's very young and beautiful, they said. He's the most beautiful swan in the world. The young swan was very happy. Nobody liked me before, he thought, but now I'm beautiful, and I'm the happiest swan in the world. The Chapter 1 Sir Brangwen Rhiannon lived in the days of King Arthur and his knights in the part of Britain, which is now England. She was twelve years old and had long red hair and green eyes. She lived with her mother and father in a small village near Sir Brangwen's castle. Sir Brangwen was the lord of the castle and the village, and everyone was afraid of him. He was a big, fat man with black hair and cold, black eyes. He was bad and greedy. He always wanted more taxes from the poor people of the village. Simon Grimstone was Rhiannon's father, and he was brave and kind. He was a tall, thin man with blonde hair and kind brown eyes. The people of the village liked Simon because he always helped them. He was not afraid of Sir Brangwen. One day, Sir Brangwen and his knights rode to the village and stopped in front of Simon's house. Simon Grimstone, cried Sir Brangwen, you killed a deer in my forest. No one can go into my forest. My men are taking you to prison. That's not true, said Simon. I didn't go into your forest and I didn't kill a deer. Take him to prison, said Sir Brangwen to his men. You want to put me in prison because I'm not afraid of you, said Simon. You're a greedy man. The people of this village are hungry because you take all their money. Be quiet, cried Sir Brangwen angrily. You'll be quiet in prison, Simon Grimstone. Simon's wife, Marion, was standing behind her husband and started crying. Take his wife, too, said Sir Brangwen. She can work in the castle kitchen and pay for the food her husband eats. Oh, please don't take me away from my daughter, said Marion, crying. There's no one who can look after her. She'll be alone. Please don't take my mother away, cried Rhiannon. But the Lord's men didn't listen to Rhiannon and took her parents away. When can I see my parents again? She asked, crying. The Lord's men laughed and rode away. The villagers were angry, but they could do nothing. After that day, they called Rhiannon Sir Brangwen's orphan. Rhiannon went inside her house and sat by the small fire, 
in the cold room. She was very sad and lonely. What will I do without my parents, she thought. I must find a job. Sir Brangwen liked eating all kinds of food, but truffles were his favorite. It was very hard to find them because they grew under the ground, on the roots of trees. Rhiannon decided to look for truffles for Sir Brangwen. Now she had a job. Every morning, Rhiannon went to the forest with a big basket. She looked for truffles all day long. At the end of the day, she looked in her basket, but she saw very few truffles. I only found three truffles today, she thought sadly. And Sir Brangwen wants lots of them for his dinners. He'll be angry. How can I find more truffles? At night, she always thought about her poor father and mother. Sir Brangwen liked hunting in the forest with his knights. He often rode through the forest when Rhiannon was looking for truffles. He and his men always made a lot of noise and scared the animals. The villagers said there were strange animals in Sir Brangwen's forest, like unicorns and dragons. Chapter 2 The Little White Horse Rhiannon continued looking for truffles in the forest every day for a year. One afternoon, she heard a noise behind her. She turned around and, what did she see? A beautiful little horse. It was white, and it had a lovely mane and tail. One of the villagers saw the beautiful little horse that evening, and he told his friends. I saw a young white horse in the forest, and it was following Rhiannon, he said. It was a very beautiful animal. Perhaps we can catch it and give it to Sir Brangwen. And pay less taxes, said a young man. That's a good idea, said an old woman. The next day, the men from the village tried to catch the little white horse, but it ran away into the dark forest. That evening, Rhiannon came home with a basket full of big truffles. Where did you find those big truffles? asked one of the men of the village. A friendly little horse helped me find them, said Rhiannon happily. Did you hear that, Richard? said the man to his friend. The little horse helped her find the truffles. The next morning, everyone in the village went to the forest to look for it. If we find lots of truffles, we can use them to pay our taxes to Sir Brangwen, said a young man. Yes, and we'll have money to buy food, said a thin young woman with two hungry children. They looked everywhere in the forest, but they could not find the beautiful little horse. It was hiding in a secret place. When they went back to the village, the little horse came to see Rhiannon. She followed him and found a lot of truffles for her basket. The beautiful little horse liked Rhiannon and wanted to help her. Day after day, Rhiannon's basket was always full of truffles for Sir Brangwen. Soon the servants at the castle started talking about the baskets of truffles and the strange little horse. One of Sir Brangwen's knights heard them and decided to follow Rhiannon into the forest. He hid behind a big tree and waited for the little white horse. That evening, he returned to the castle and talked to Sir Brangwen. Now I know why Rhiannon finds lots of truffles, said the knight happily. Oh, really? said Sir Brangwen. Tell me. I was in the forest today and hid behind a big tree, said the knight. Then suddenly I saw... What did you see? said Sir Brangwen. Tell me, quickly. There's a strange little horse that lives in the forest and Rhiannon follows him. Then he stops and smells the ground. That's where Rhiannon looks for truffles, and she finds them. What? said Sir Brangwen, surprised. A little horse that finds truffles? Yes, said the knight. And when the girl's basket is full, she sits under a tree and rests. The little horse sits next to her and she sings sweet songs to him. But there's one strange thing about him. 
What? asked Sir Brangwen. He has a lump between his eyes, said the knight. A lump? Then it's a young unicorn, cried Sir Brangwen. Soon that lump will grow and become a horn. It's a unicorn, a magic creature. A unicorn, said the knight, surprised. I didn't know there were unicorns in the forest. Sir Brangwen called the best hunters in the village to his castle. You are the best hunters in the village, said Sir Brangwen. Now listen carefully. You must go to the forest and find the little white horse, said Sir Brangwen. Then bring him to me. There's a prize for the hunter who finds him. A big prize. Now go. The hunters went to the forest and looked for the beautiful white unicorn. They looked for days, but no one could find him. Sir Brangwen was angry, and the hunters were afraid of him. One afternoon, an old knight who lived in the castle went to see Sir Brangwen. Do you want to find the unicorn, sir? asked the old knight. Of course I do, said Sir Brangwen. Then you must send the young girl into the forest alone, said the old knight. Alone? But why? asked Sir Brangwen. When the unicorn sees her, he'll go and sit next to her. She'll sing to him and he'll fall asleep. Then the hunters can catch it. That's a very good idea, said Sir Brangwen. He called his knights and said, Go to the village and get Rhiannon. I want to see her immediately. The knights went to the village and looked for Rhiannon everywhere. When she saw them, she was afraid. What do they want? She thought. You must come with us to the castle immediately, said one of the knights. Why must I come with you? asked Rhiannon. Sir Brangwen wants to talk to you, said another knight. Get on this horse quickly. Rhiannon got on the horse and went to the castle with the knights. Chapter 3 Rhiannon's Secret The knights took Rhiannon to the castle. Sir Brangwen was sitting at a long table with his friends. They were laughing and eating all kinds of food. Young Rhiannon, he said, smiling, you must help me catch the beautiful white unicorn of the forest. The white unicorn? asked Rhiannon, surprised. Yes, that little white horse is a young unicorn, said Sir Brangwen. Then it's a magic creature, said Rhiannon. When you are in the forest, you must call him, said Sir Brangwen. He will come to you. Oh no, said Rhiannon. The little unicorn is my friend. He loves me. I can't do what you ask. You must do what I ask, cried Sir Brangwen. I'm your lord. If you don't listen to me, I'll kill your father and mother. Rhiannon started crying and couldn't stop. What could she do? She felt terrible. Tomorrow morning we're going to the forest to catch the unicorn, said Sir Brangwen angrily. He looked at one of his knights and said, Take this girl away. She can sleep in the hall. I want to finish my meal now. Bring in the roast chicken and the truffles quickly. Poor Rhiannon did not sleep all night. Early the next morning, Sir Brangwen and his knights took her to the forest. Sir Brangwen and his men hid behind some trees, and Rhiannon sat on the grass. They waited all day and all night. When the moon was high in the sky, the young unicorn came and sat next to Rhiannon. He looked at her with his big eyes and put his nose next to her cheek. He was happy when he was with his friend, but Rhiannon could not sing because she was afraid and unhappy. Suddenly, Sir Brangwen came riding through the forest on his big black horse. Rhiannon jumped onto the unicorn, put her arms around his neck, and quickly rode away. 
Sir Brangwen followed them. The knights and the hunters waited for their lord to return with the unicorn. It was very dark in the forest, and they couldn't see anything. But they heard the sound of horses and then a loud cry. They waited a long time, but their lord did not return. Very early the next morning, the knights and hunters started looking for Sir Brangwen. After many hours, they found him in the forest. There was blood everywhere. The blood came from his heart. He's dead, said one knight. But who killed him? asked another knight. I don't know, said a young hunter. Everyone looked at Sir Brangwen's body, but no one was sad. His son, Sir Ivor, was the new lord. He was a kind, friendly young man, and everyone liked him. He helped the villagers, and the men in prison were all free. Rhiannon's parents finally went back to their home, and she was very happy. Rhiannon, her father asked, who killed Sir Brangwen? You were in the forest that night. It's a secret, father. It's my secret, said Rhiannon, smiling. All I can say is this. Unicorns have parents, too. The End Chapter One Beauty's Family A rich man lives in a big city near the sea. He has got three daughters and three sons. One daughter is called Beauty because she is very beautiful. The other two daughters are called Rosalind and Hortensia. They are lazy and unfriendly. They like going out and having fun. They both want to find a rich husband. They do not like Beauty because she is beautiful. Beauty has got long red hair. She is kind and friendly. She likes staying at home and reading books. She also likes playing the piano. Beauty's father is a merchant. One day he loses all his money because his ship is lost at sea. My dear children, he says sadly, I haven't got much money. We're poor. We must leave this big house and go and live in the country. Oh dear, say the two sisters. We're poor. This is terrible. What bad luck, say the three brothers. We have to work now, says Beauty's father. Work, say the two sisters. No, we don't want to work, and we don't want to live in the country. They start to cry. Beauty is sad, but she says, Let's not cry. We can work and be happy without money. The family goes to the country and lives in a small house. Beauty gets up at four o'clock every morning to clean the house and cook. Then she washes the family's clothes in the river. The three brothers work in the country. Rosalind and Hortensia do not work. They do nothing all day. They sleep all morning and walk in the woods in the afternoon. I'm unhappy says Rosalind. I don't like the country because there's nothing to do. We can't go to the theater and wear nice clothes, says Hortensia. And we haven't got any friends. Look at beauty, says Rosalind angrily. She works and she's happy in this terrible place. Beauty's father says, dear beauty, you work a lot and you're always happy. You're a wonderful daughter. Chapter 2 Beauty's Rose A year later, Beauty's father gets an important letter. He calls his six children and says, Listen to this letter. You ship is here. It is not lost at sea. Please come to the port. Everyone is happy. This is wonderful news, say the three sons. Yes, says their father. 
The ship with my goods is in the port. We're rich again, says Rosalind. We can buy beautiful clothes. We can go back to our big house in the city, says Hortensia. I must go to the port today, says her father happily. Oh, father, says Hortensia. Bring me some new clothes and new hats. Yes, says Rosalind, and some new shoes and jewels. Beauty's father looks at her and says, What do you want, Beauty? Please don't spend your money, father, says Beauty. Just bring me a rose. Beauty's father gets to the port and finds his ship, but there are no goods on it. It is empty. What bad luck, he says angrily. I must go home and tell the children the bad news. On the way home, he crosses a big forest. It is snowing and windy. He is lost. Where am I? He thinks. Where can I go? I'm very cold and tired. He hears some wolves and he is afraid. Suddenly he sees a big castle in the forest and there are lights in the windows. Oh, good, he thinks. Perhaps the people in the castle can help me. He takes his horse to the stable near the castle. He knocks on the big door of the castle, but no one answers. He waits outside the door, then he opens the door and goes inside. He sees a big hall with a fireplace. There is a long table with a lot of food on it. He is cold and sits near the fireplace. How strange, he thinks. There's no one here. He is hungry and sits down at the table and starts to eat. Then he is sleepy. He finds a warm, comfortable bed and falls asleep. The next morning, he finds some new clothes near his bed. How nice! New clothes, he thinks. A kind person lives in this castle. He looks out of the window and is surprised. It's not snowing and it's a beautiful day, he thinks. And there are flowers in the garden. He gets dressed and goes to the hall. There are biscuits, chocolate, and milk on the long table. He sits down and says, thank you for this lovely breakfast. He looks round but sees no one. He eats and decides to go home. He goes to the stable and gets his horse. In the garden, he sees some roses. Beauty wants a rose, he thinks. He takes a lovely one. Suddenly, he hears a terrible noise. He turns round and sees an ugly monster. Chapter 3 The Beast You're a bad man! cries the beast angrily. You come to my castle and I save your life. You eat here and you sleep here. And then you take one of my beautiful roses. For this, you must die. Beauty's father starts to cry. Oh, sir, I'm sorry. You're very kind. Please don't be angry with me. This rose is for one of my daughters. My name is not Sir, it is Beast. Please call me by my name. You talk about your daughters, then one of your daughters must die in your place. Oh no, says Beauty's father. They're young and they don't want to die. Then you must come back here and die, says the Beast. I can wait three months. Do you agree to come back? Beauty's father agrees to come back. My daughters must not die, he thinks. I want to go home and see my children for the last time. Before Beauty's father leaves the castle, the beast talks to him. 
I'm not had, says the beast. Go back to your bedroom. There is a big chest there. Fill it with everything you want, and it is yours. Beauty's father fills the chest with a lot of gold. Then he gets on his horse and goes home. When he is at home, he gives the rose to Beauty. Take this rose, Beauty, he says sadly. Let me tell you about my terrible adventure. He tells his children about the empty ship in the port, the castle in the forest, and the beast. Rosalind and Hortensia are angry with Beauty. They say, Father must die because you like roses, Beauty. No, says Beauty. Father is not going to die. I'm going to the beast's castle. No, dear sister say her three brothers. We're going to his castle and we're going to kill him. No, that's not possible, says their father. The beast is very big and strong. I'm old. I must go and die. But Beauty does not agree. She decides to go to the beast's castle. No, father, she says. You must not go. I want to go. Never, my dear beauty, says her father. I'm not afraid, says beauty. You must live and look after my brothers and sisters. They need you, beauty's father thinks for a moment. Then he says sadly, All right, beauty, you can go. Beauty's brothers are very sad, but Hortensia and Rosalind are not. The next morning, Beauty and her father go to the Beast's castle. Inside the castle, they see a long table with a lot of good food on it. Beauty and her father are not hungry, but they sit down and eat. Suddenly, they hear a loud noise. What's that terrible noise? asks Beauty. The Beast is coming, says her father. Beauty sees the beast's ugly face, and she is terrified. Oh, this beast is really terrible, she thinks. The beast looks at her and says, You're a brave girl. I'm very sorry about the rose from your garden, says Beauty quietly. The beast looks at Beauty's father and says, You must go away tomorrow, and don't come back. Do you understand? Beauty's father looks at the beast and then at his daughter. Oh, Beauty, he says. Please go home. Let me stay here. No, father, says Beauty. We must be brave. We're both tired. Let's go and sleep now. Tomorrow morning, you can go home to my brothers and sisters. That night, Beauty has a dream. In her dream, a good fairy says, You're a good girl, Beauty, and you've got a kind heart. You want to save your father's life. You're going to be very happy one day. Chapter 4 Life at the Castle the next morning, Beauty's father leaves the castle. He is crying. Don't cry, father, says Beauty. Remember, I love you. Goodbye, dear Beauty, says her father. Beauty is terrified. The beast is going to eat me tonight, she thinks. I want to enjoy my last day. I'm going to visit the garden of the castle. She goes to see the big garden, and she is surprised. It is a beautiful garden with a lot of lovely flowers. Then she goes to see the big castle. She looks in all the rooms. On one door, she sees this sign. Beauty's room. She opens the door and sees a lovely room. There is a nice bed and a mirror on the wall. Beauty looks round and thinks, 
There's a piano and a lot of books for me. How strange. Perhaps the beast doesn't want to eat me tonight. She takes a book and starts to read it. Suddenly, she sees these words on the pages. Welcome, beauty. You're the queen here. Tell me everything you want. I only want to see my poor father, says Beauty. Suddenly, she sees her father in the mirror on the wall. He is very sad. She also sees her home and Hortensia and Rosalind. They are happy without Beauty. The beast is kind to me, she thinks. Why am I afraid of him? At 12 o'clock, she has lunch. After lunch, she goes to her room. What a beautiful piano, thinks Beauty. I want to play it. She plays some wonderful music on the piano. Then she looks at all the books in her room. Some of them have got pictures and others have not. She takes a book about flowers and looks at the pictures of different flowers. Then she sees pictures of roses of all colors. Now I want to go to the garden and look at the lovely roses, she thinks. She goes to the garden and stays there all afternoon. She looks at the flowers and feels happy. At dinner time, she sits down at the long table, and then she hears the beast coming. She is terrified. Beauty, can I sit here with you? Asks the beast. You're the lord of the castle, says Beauty. And you're the queen, says the beast. Can I ask you a question? Yes, of course, says Beauty quietly. Am I very ugly? Asks the beast. Beauty does not know what to say. She looks at him and thinks for a moment. Well, yes, you are, says Beauty. But you're kind and polite. The beast looks at Beauty and smiles. You're right, I'm terribly ugly, but I'm kind. This is your home now, Beauty. Please don't be sad. Some men are handsome, but they're not kind, says Beauty. I prefer you because you've got a good heart. Thank you, Beauty, says the beast. Now, Beauty is not afraid of the beast, and she eats a big dinner. The beast looks at her and asks a question. Do you want to marry me, Beauty? What a question. Beauty is terrified. What can I say? Thinks Beauty. She is silent for a moment. And then she says, No, I'm sorry, I don't want to marry you. The beast is angry and Beauty is afraid. Then he goes out of the room and says, Goodbye, Beauty. Chapter 5 The Magic Ring Beauty spends three months at the beautiful castle. Every day she reads books and plays the piano. She walks everywhere in the big garden. She likes the tall trees and the flowers of different colors. She puts beautiful flowers in the rooms of the castle. Sometimes she makes perfume from the flowers. But the days are long and she is often lonely. Beauty often thinks about her father, her sisters, and her brothers. I want to see my father again, she thinks sadly. And I want to see my home again, too. The beast goes to see her every evening at dinner time at nine o'clock. They talk about interesting things and are happy together. Beauty is not afraid of his ugly face now. Every evening, the beast asks, Beauty, the same question. Beauty, do you want to marry me? And every evening, Beauty answers, No. One day, Beauty says, 
Why do you ask me the same question every evening? Because I hope to hear a different answer, says the beast. I'm sorry. I don't want to marry you, says Beauty. The beast is very sad, but I'm always going to be your friend, she says. You're a wonderful friend, says the beast, and you are too, says Beauty, smiling. I know I'm terribly ugly, says the beast, but I love you a lot. I'm very happy with you. Please don't leave me. Beauty's face becomes red and she is quiet for a moment. In the mirror of my room, says Beauty, I see my poor father. He's sad and lonely. He thinks I'm dead. My sisters are married and my brothers are away. I want to see my father for the last time. Can I go and see him, please? Yes, you can go and see your father, says the beast. But I'm going to be very sad without you. Oh, thank you, says Beauty happily. Please don't be sad, beast. I'm going to come back in a week. All right, says the beast. You can visit your father tomorrow morning. But remember, you must come back in a week. Before you come back, put this ring on a table near your bed. It's a magic ring. Goodbye, beauty. Chapter 6 the sister's plan. The next morning, Beauty wakes up in her bedroom in her father's house. She gets up and goes downstairs. When her father sees her, he cries, Beauty, is that you? How wonderful. My daughter is well and she's here. Beauty is very happy and hugs her father. Get dressed quickly and then tell me about the beast says her father happily. She goes to her room and finds a chest full of beautiful clothes. This is a present from the beast, says Beauty to her father. He's very nice and gives me presents every day. She chooses some lovely clothes. I want to give these lovely clothes to Rosalind and Hortensia, she says. When she says this, the chest disappears. The beast is watching you, says Beauty's father. These beautiful clothes are for you and not for your sisters. Suddenly the chest comes back again. That morning, Rosalind and Hortensia come to visit their sister. They are both very unhappy. Oh, Beauty, says Rosalind. I'm unhappy. Why are you unhappy, Rosalind? asks Beauty. Oh, it's a long story, says Rosalind. Please tell me, says Beauty. My husband is handsome and he spends all day in front of a mirror. He never looks at me or talks to me. Oh dear, that's a big problem, says Beauty. Hortensia says, my husband is very clever, but he doesn't like anyone, and no one likes him. I can never invite my friends to lunch or dinner because he doesn't like them. We've got a lot of problems with our husbands, they say. My poor sisters, says Beauty. I'm very sorry. Tell us about the beast, says Hortensia. Oh, the beast is not a bad man, says Beauty. He's very kind. I live in his beautiful castle, and I'm the queen. I don't work. I read, play the piano, and walk in the garden. Every evening the beast comes to see me at dinner, and we talk about a lot of things. It's wonderful. The two sisters are very angry, and they go to the garden. Beauty wears lovely clothes and shoes, says Rosalind. She's like a queen. She's very happy. Why is she lucky, and why are we unlucky? 
You're right, Rosalind, says Hortensia. We're not very lucky. But maybe we can be lucky. Beauty has to return to the beast in a week, or he's going to get angry and eat her. Then we must keep her here, says Rosalind. Then the beast is going to get angry. During the week, the two sisters are kind to Beauty. They talk and laugh with her. They walk together in the country. Beauty is happy with her sisters. Rosalind and Hortensia love me, she thinks. They're good sisters, and I love them a lot. At the end of the week, Beauty says, I must go back to the Beast's castle. But her sisters start to cry. Oh, Beauty, says Rosalind. Please stay with us another week. We need you. Yes, Beauty, says Hortensia. Please don't leave us. We have fun with you and we love you. Yes, says Rosalind. Stay with us. We can do a lot of things together. Beauty does not know what to do. She decides to stay another week. Chapter 7 The Dream The beast is going to be very sad without me, Beauty thinks. But I want to stay with my family for a few more days. Then I'm going to go back them. Beauty thinks about the beast. She misses him. Ten days later, Beauty dreams about the beast. In her dream, the beast is on the grass in the garden of the castle, and he's going to die. Beauty, whispers the beast, today is the tenth day and you're not here. I can't live without you. I can't eat or drink. Beauty wakes up and thinks, the poor beast is going to die without me. I must go back to him. She takes the ring and puts it on a table near her bed. The beast is ugly, but he's very kind, she thinks. Why don't I marry him? I'm happy with him. My sisters have handsome, clever husbands, but they're not happy. Beauty falls asleep, and the next morning she wakes up at the beast's castle Today I'm going to wear a beautiful dress, Beauty thinks. At nine o'clock in the evening, she goes to dinner and waits for the beast. But he doesn't come to see her. What's happening? Beauty thinks. Where's the beast? Why isn't he here? Beast! She cries. Beast, where are you? Answer me. She opens the doors of all the rooms and looks everywhere in the castle, but she cannot find him. Suddenly, she remembers her dream. She runs to the garden and sees the beast on the grass. Oh no, she cries. Is he dead? She listens to his heart, and it is beating. Good. He's not dead, she thinks. She gets some cold water from the river and wets his face. The beast slowly opens his eyes. Beauty, he whispers. I'm dying, but I'm happy because you're here. No, beast, cries Beauty. Don't die. You must live and become my husband. I love you, and I can't live without you. Chapter 8, The Prince Suddenly all the lights of the castle and the garden turn on. There are beautiful fireworks in the sky. Beauty is surprised and looks at the castle, then she turns round and looks at the beast. What a surprise! She sees a handsome young man, 
Thank you, beauty, says the young man. The spell is broken. But where is the beast? asks beauty. I am the beast, says the prince. I don't understand, says beauty. Who are you? I'm a prince and this is my castle, says the young man. Sometimes a bad witch puts a spell on a prince and only true love can break the spell. Now I know your love is true. The prince takes her hand and says, Do you want to marry me, Beauty? Beauty looks at the handsome prince and says, Yes, I do. Beauty and the prince go to the castle. When she opens the door, she is surprised. My family, you're all here, cries Beauty. She is happy when she sees her family. They talk and laugh together. Suddenly, she sees the good fairy from her dream. Beauty, says the good fairy, you've got a kind heart, and you're going to marry the prince and become a princess. Then the good fairy looks at Beauty's two sisters. You're both bad, lazy, and unkind, says the fairy. You don't love anyone. The fairy says some magic words, and suddenly Rosalind and Hortensia become statues. Oh, no, cries Beauty. My sisters are statues. Your sisters have got hearts of stone, says the fairy. Now they can't move, but they can see and hear everything. When they understand their mistakes, they can become Rosalind and Hortensia again. The next day, Beauty and the Prince get married. Everyone dances and sings in the castle. It is a happy day. People give flowers to Beauty and the Prince. The Prince sees tears in Beauty's eyes and says, Don't cry, my Beauty. We're going to be very happy together.